I love libraries. I think oh, there it is. the thing that comes to mind right now is the smell. Walking into um, the library in Kinston, North Carolina, the public library, and uh, it was one of those wonderful old municipal buildings, probably built in the 20s or 30s, and uh, just the smell of all those books, of paper, the smell of the card catalog. Um, I think our, our sense of smell is one, one of the most evocative of the five senses, and, um, and that's a very powerful association for me. It was, it was like a feast. Um, you could walk in and just uh, walk all over the library, and whatever caught your eye was yours to explore. And for a kid, of six or seven or eight or nine years old, that's, um, that's a powerful thing. Nobody's telling you what to do. Nobody's directing you. Um, you're really a free agent there in the library. My favorite librarian growing up was a wonderful lady named Polly Edinger. And she was the school librarian at Northwest Elementary School in Kinston, North Carolina. And um, she was a gracious, wonderful Southern lady, a woman of great intelligence, um, beautiful manners, and she loved books. And she would read to us. And there wasn't going to be any kind of quiz after the reading. We weren't going to be tested on it. She just read to us for the pleasure of reading. Well, I have strong opinions. I think, um, I mean, in America, it's all about investment these days, right? I mean, you know, we need to run society more like a business, more like a corporation. But then we turn around and something as critical and fundamental as libraries, which, you know, are our intellectual capital, we're starving those. So if we truly want to be smart in what we're doing with this society and our culture, we would fund libraries and education to the hilt. Texas has a... Um, has an infamous history of banning books here and there. And uh, okay, again, to use the corporate analogy where the free market you know, rules all and decides all and the wisdom of the free market is um, ultimately the best in the long run. Well, okay, why can't we apply that to the intellectual marketplace? Put ideas and books out there and over time, quality will win out. But as soon as you start banning books, as soon as, as soon as the state starts deciding what can be read and what can't be read, I mean, where do you draw the line on that? Let's see, I just finished a novel called Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, which is about football, cheerleaders, the Iraq war, capitalism, the movie business, and the general insanity of American life. And, um, so right now I want, I want to write some short stories while I'm thinking what the next novel might be.